Today on Mathematics for Woodworkers, we are going to talk circles. Enjoy! Good morning, fellow woodworkers! Welcome back to another episode of Mathematics and also Physics for Woodworkers. And to become a better woodworker, you must also know some theory. And this is what I am here for. And today's episode is one that I would consider as being very important. But if you want to see more episodes, why not check out the link at the top of the description. There you can find the playlist link. Today, as you might have heard in the introduction already, we are going to talk about these things. Circles. Something weird happened, but this doesn't matter. So as a woodworker, you must know a bit about circles. They are one of the most important geometries that you are going to use as a woodworker next to rectangles or squares. And today we are going to discuss what a circle actually is in a mathematical sense, what parts we are interested about in a circle, so-called radius for example, and also how you can cut circles more efficiently as a woodworker. Because we all don't want to waste any kind of wood. And this is why we have to talk about it. This is why I consider this as being one of the most important episodes in our playlist. And no matter if it is for a simple coaster, if it is for a tabletop or maybe even a clock face. Circles are frequently used and at least once during your lifetime as a woodworker you have to cut out a circle at some point. And you better learn something about them now before it's too late. And at first big question, what exactly is a circle? To be honest, um, as a fun little fact, this right here isn't a circle. This is what you call a disc. It's a three-dimensional thing. A circle is only the set of points which basically make up the arc of a circle, okay? So a circle in and of itself, we don't consider a disc right now, we want to see how we can cut in circles. A circle is only the set of points or all the points which are a fixed amount away from a so-called center. Center is right in the middle of a circle. And the center and all the points on our arc are being connected by the so-called radius. This is the fixed amount that I was talking about earlier. And with this simple idea in mind, we can already approximate a circle. Follow me. Now let's follow the idea of approximating a circle before we get into the reconstruction of a circle. And it really doesn't matter what you use for it as long as it has a fixed length. Let's suppose that this kind of spatula that I got right here, that's a weird um, piece of measurement, but it really doesn't matter, is going to represent our radius. So think back to what I just said. We are going to have a certain center. We are going to call the center C. And now all the points on our circle are going to be the same distance away from our center. And they are going to be separated from the center by the radius. Okay, so let's say this distance right here is going to be our radius. Let's put our first point onto here. Okay, this right here is our first point. Let's go to the second point. Let's rotate it a uh, tiny little bit around our circle. It really doesn't matter in which kind of way, okay? Just like the clock would go. And if you take a look at all of these points, it doesn't even look too shabby if we were to connect these points now freehandedly. Then you are going to notice that they are already going to trace out something that is pretty familiar to us. It's going to trace out the circle that we were striving for. And that's not too bad, right? I mean, I was just roughly approximating the thing and it already looks rather like a circle. And now we can draw the distance in that we um, set at the beginning as the fixed amount. And this right here is going to be the radius. The radius is the distance from the center to the arc of the circle. Now there's also something different you might have heard of before, the so-called diameter. There's not much, much magic revolving around the diameter. It's just two times the radius. The diameter is what connects two opposite points of the circle through the center. So the diameter can be constructed like this. For example, we got two opposite points running through the center. That's the distance and this is the diameter. Now, what you're going to notice is that our diameter is basically just two times our radius because it's the distance from the center to the arc of the circle, but twice. Meaning we got the nice relationship of our diameter D being nothing other than two times the radius. Now it has been demonstrated time and time again on YouTube that you can cut out circles, or I should rather say disks, to put it more mathematically, using basically all kinds of machinery. Be it on a table saw, on a bench saw, or using your router. 
they all follow the same procedure basically. What you're going to do is you can either rotate your whole wood around a center, this example works for the table saw or the bench saw, such that your table saw's blade is going to act basically as the thing which is going to trace out your circle. Or if you use a router, you're going to pinpoint some kind of chick, a long arm which is going to act as your radius at the center and then you are going to rotate your router around and cut out the circle. Now, we can demonstrate this basically using a simple mathematical tool called a compass. A compass, you have seen it in schools before, is a very simple device which is going to satisfy our construction for a circle very nicely. We need a fixed amount, okay, this is the radius, you can either make it a small radius or longer radius. We also need some kind of pen, I'm going to use this chart pen and something which is going to fix our radius or our pen, our compass in general, on our center. I'm going to use magnets for this. Now I'm going to try my best to create ourselves a circle using this compass. Okay, I'm going to do it piecewise, very slowly. We don't want to do any mistakes here. Okay, okay, thus far that's good. Not looking too shabby, gotta admit that. Okay, we are getting closer and closer to a circle and and there we go. You see, there was a nice construction. This worked out very nicely. This right here is not a perfect circle, obviously not, but it's pretty close. And for our purposes as a woodworker, this would already work. But now here comes by far the most important part about this episode. We, as people who have to basically spend money on materials, don't want to waste any of the material at all. We want to use as less material as possible for our project, such that we can use the, the, the remaining material for other projects, for example, scrap wood boards or the like. And this is where a bit of thinking comes into how to cut out circles. Now, let me just demonstrate this at this circle right here. Suppose we are just going to make use of a square piece of wood, okay, that we have glued together using wood panels and we want to cut out a circle of that. Okay, now if we got this circle, okay, square piece, it's going to look like this and then we are going to use our router or whatever chick we have created to create ourselves a circle. Now I want you guys to notice that everything outside of the disc is going to be waste material. All of this is going to be completely wasted in our efforts to create the desired tabletop or the like. Now that's a lot of waste, I would say, that's a lot of damage, but we can do better than this. And this is where the mathematics part of woodworking comes in. Instead of using a big old square, what we are going to do is we are going to approximate our circle using differently sized panels. Let me demonstrate using the circle that we got right here. Okay, let me get rid of my chalk, of my compass. And now we are going to assume that we are going to split our circle up or our square that we got at the beginning, okay, our original idea, into let's say six boards. Now six boards we are going to assume that they all have equal width, okay, they are all um, having the same width. Let's say this right here is our diameter and now we are going to cut it up. Six boards means three on each side and now we can start cutting them up nicely such that we don't waste as much material. This right here is going to be the first board for example. Okay, always connecting our arc of the circle with our boards. Now how would we place the next boards? I mean we wouldn't place them like this or cut them like this because this would waste a lot of material. We can do better than that. Namely by starting at the arc of our circle again and then going downwards. And you can already see that we are basically tracing out our circle in some kind of way. And this is the magic that you always need to take into consideration when cutting out circles. We don't want to waste too much material. We want to waste as less as possible. And now here comes the best part. The more you get to the outside, the less waste you are going to get. And this is our last board. And you can see that we got quite a big portion that hasn't been um, used in comparison to before. Now, this right here is an approximate construction for our circle using six boards instead of um, one very, very wide board, for example. Um, if we were to put in our original square that we assumed, then you see how less waste we are actually going to get using this construction. This right here would have been wasted before, but now we don't waste it because we have thought about our process a bit more before we got started in the first place. But how can you find out 
what heights your board must have such that you still get the desired circle out on the other side after cutting. Now you can go two routes, either you cut out a template of your circle at first and then try to lay out your boards um, over the template such that they fit, but then you are going to waste a lot of wood on the template which isn't the way to go, or you can go through a copious amount of um, hard to swallow mathematics which you can find out over on my other channel Flamble Maths, my main channel, linked down there in the description and actually get yourself an algorithm or like a recipe, a formula for the length of the boards and you are in luck. For you guys, I have programmed something in Python, you can find the link down there, it's basically a calculator for calculating how many boards you are going to need and also how long they must be. Um, yeah, and you can freely use it. Make sure to use it if you want to cut out circles. And I'm going to demonstrate to you that this works very nicely over at my workshop. I've had some old 9.5cm white boards lying around that we can use for the demonstration. The program requires you to put in your desired radius, in my case 38cm, and how many boards you want to use, in my case 8. And then it will automatically tell you how wide one board must be and how long they need to be, order from left to right in a list. Then I started marking my board lengths and cut them to sizes using my miter saw. After that I roughly laid them out. and started drawing my circle with chalk accordingly. And you know what? It worked perfectly. Always keep in mind though that you need to make your boards a few millimeters longer than the program suggests just to have some room for error that could occur and also you are going to sand later so definitely make sure to add a few millimeters at least. And the diameter of 76 cm was right on point too, by the way. Now one thing you really need to consider here, if you want to get out a circle, let's say with a diameter of 1 meter out on the other side, you also have to consider that we are not using dimensionless tools. They all have some kind of dimension, let's say our router bit is half a centimeter thick for example, it has a diameter of half a centimeter. Now, if you are cutting out a circle with this and you don't take the tool diameter into consideration, you are going to lose half a centimeter on this side of the circle and half a centimeter of this side on the circle, being demonstrated by the chalk that I put onto the boards for example. This could be the part that is going to be lost during cutting. It's a waste, but it is what it is in woodworking. Meaning you are going to lose one centimeter overall in the radius of your circle. So just to make sure that you get the desired radius or diameter out on the other side once your project is done, always make sure to add a bit more than the tool diameter to your whole radius overall, such that you don't run into problems later. So for example, if you want to have a radius of 50 centimeters and you have a tool of half a centimeter in diameter, then what you want to do is you are going to take 50 dot 5 centimeters or maybe a bit more for, for a little bit of error and then sanding at the end. So always take this into consideration and then nothing can go wrong. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today and I think that was a very interesting episode with, um, with a tool that you can use for completely free which is maybe going to enrich your life as a woodworker by a big margin. Because in normal case you don't really find free software online which is going to help you heaps but this program, this little algorithm um, is, is really good. It really does the job and it's pretty accurate as you have seen in my very very rough demonstration and it works wonders and it's going to help you waste less material over time and I hope this was helpful and to your liking and if it was why not make sure to subscribe to the channel and to watch all the other videos in the mathematics for woodworkers playlist. Also don't forget to check out my shop stemage.eu where I sell my handcrafted products and up until next video I'm wishing you guys a flamble day and please stay safe. Ciao!